Hello guys, I hope you're all well. Today I'm just going to be testing and trying out a whole bunch of new makeup on my face, in front of the camera, and it's taken a while, but you know how it is when you get press or you know you purchase things in drips and drabs and it's just not enough to do a full video on, so you keep waiting to accumulate more stuff. But Enough of that, I am just going to go straight in. There are a couple of new collections that came out quite recently. Um, one of these is Hera's, I think, Ojou Le Jou. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Really small, party-themed, ultra-sparkly capsule collection with an eye palette, two liquid lipsticks, and also two special edition black cushion cases. Isn't this beautiful? Now, just for comparison's sake, this is regular black cushion and this is the special edition one so if you love this you know it's embossed and this is woven it's fabric I don't know about in the West but here in Asia a lot of girls collect cushion cases simply because you know these are things you can keep around for years and years they are beautiful they are reusable and you know it's just gorgeous to bring out around with you they also have an eyeshadow palette in the collection which I'll be using today. I'm going for some meetings so I probably won't go too crazy with the mustard yellow and the rose shade in the middle but you know, I'll see what I can do with this one. I've tried some of Hera's eyeshadow formulas before and I will say the pigmentation level is pretty low if you are used to a lot of western formulations for eyeshadows. We want instant payoff, we want a lot of buildability, whereas for a lot of the Korean and Japanese eyeshadow formulas, it tends to be very very translucent, not incredibly buildable and definitely not intense from the get-go. So we're gonna have to see how this is going to perform. I'm just going to go in with a normal brush first and I'm going to start with this soft, sort of a warm, peachy camel tone. Oh, that's a lot of pigmentation. Now this is very, very silky and finely milk powder and pigmentation level right now for at least this matte shade is reminding me of Urban Decay's matte eyeshadows. I think I'm not gonna go too yellow today because I'm doing slightly brighter lips so I'm not gonna go there. Ooh. I was expecting it to be completely translucent, but this actually has payoff. It's not pretty, it's not chunky, it feels extremely smooth and buttery on the fingers. Wow. So I'm just gonna go in with the deepest brown for a little bit of definition in the outer corners. But I'm not going to go too crazy with my eye makeup today because it is still a work day and I'm on my way out for some meetings, as always. Okay, this is not giving me a ton of payoff. It's not patchy or, you know, poor quality, it's just slightly translucent because it is a pearl shade, which is understandable. I kind of feel like they need a dark matte shade for definition because you could use very little to get a good payoff with a matte dark brown. But do also again remember that this is a Korean brand and they don't like to go too heavy with definition. If you are a beginner to makeup and you're worried about being too heavy-handed or looking too crazy with eyeshadows etc, then you know, check out a couple of the Korean brands. Okay, I'm gonna go finish off my eyeliner and some mascara and I'll be right back. Now on to the rest of the face. Another brand that has recently launched a beautiful summer collection, which kind of wowed me visually, is Shantikai. So, They've come out with two new translucent, well, kind of sheer lipsticks. One is red, one is pink. They have a couple of cream blushers. These are called uh, aqua blushes because they have this sort of a cooling 
watery sensation on the skin when you apply them. And of course they have this beautiful bronzer. Now this bronzer looks like it's going to be pretty deep for someone with my skin tone, so I'm going to go very, very light-handed with a face brush that already has a tiny bit of powder on it. This is my Wayne Goss number 2. I'd rather have too little than too much right from the start. It's not too bad if you use a very light hand because it's very, very translucent, it's very silky, it's one of those you know, kind of slushy formulas that feels really creamy and light on the skin. So I think, you know, if you use a light hand, you should be alright, even if you have uh, lighter skin. The thing I like about this shade is, you know, it's a very nice chocolatey latte caramel brown. It's not too orange, it's not too red. <laughs> Because I am kind of thinking of going sort of corally red on the lips today, I'm gonna go with the slightly deeper pink blush. Uh, this looks really intense here, but it actually is very, very translucent and it does have a gleam. There's some pearl in it. It does not go on sticky or greasy or anything like that. Uh, it really just melts on with a watery burst, you know, that kind of very fresh. A cooling sensation on the skin. So I'm still not gonna go straight in on my cheeks because this is quite a strong shade for my skin tone so I'm gonna go in with you know a couple of fingers. And I also need to be careful to use a hand mirror to check because um, the heavy lights here actually tend to make blush colours look a little bit too washed out on camera so you think you have nothing on and you keep building and then you look at yourself in a mirror and you realise it's way too much colour. Can you see the sheen on my skin? It's not metallic, it is not sparkly, it just looks fresh. Okay, if you want to go straight in with the blush on your cheeks, Make sure you blend fast because this has a sort of like a jelly formula. It will set on your skin. So if you leave it there and you don't blend fast enough, I think you'll end up with a patch. If you're going to do this, don't do both sides. Do one side at a time so you have time to blend it out quickly. I like... It doesn't look like obvious blush. It looks like it's part of your skin. Now I'm going to move on to something else and come back to the Shantikai product when it's time to do my lips but I am dying, dying to try on this one. Now Maybelline has their classic Master Chrome highlighter in the shade 100 Molten Gold. This is a classic. It tends to come off a little bit yellow-orange on my skin tone so I have to be very very careful how I use this but I just saw recently they launched a 050 Molten Rose Gold. I'm not sure if this launched in the Western markets maybe months or years ago, but I've only just seen this. I know they came out with a lot of um, the very holographic colored ones, you know, a pink shift and everything else, but I didn't like those. They felt very gritty, very chunky. They spread out and looked like, you know, large pieces of grainy highlight on the skin, so I totally did not like those at all. Molten Gold is the only shade I ever felt like was a nice and fine and buttery enough texture that I wanted to use it regularly. And this has that same texture, except it's slightly paler, more of a pink champagne kind of a tone. Now I'm gonna go in with a fan brush from Laura Mercy and just see how it looks. <sighs> This is a perfect, perfect colour. I can see that if I were to be a lot more heavy-handed with this, it would start to emphasise texture, you know, little uneven bumps or whatever on my face, because it is very metallic. But it is beautiful. You know, the thing I like about this is, it's not overly pink, 
it is not overly golden either, so I consider this a perfect sort of a neutral metallic highlighter for fair to light skins that may find the molten gold shade a little bit too yellow. Now for the lips, I'm going back to Shantkai, so I don't quite know which of these shades to wear right now. The pink is a little bit on the cooler toned side, obviously. Uh, they look really, really bright on camera. I could technically go with either of these shades, but I think, I think I'm just gonna go with a very light wash of the pink, just to let you guys see. It's not as shiny looking as I expected, but you know, that's not really a plus or a minus, it just depends on your preference. Mm, what is nice about this is, you know, when you try to build up colour with sheer lipstick, sometimes they go streaky, they go patchy, uh, you don't get an even layer of pigmentation over your lips. This is fine, this is totally fine. It is pretty low maintenance application wise, although, you know, it's Shantikai and it's high maintenance on your wallet. So for final, final bit of fun, I'm gonna go back to my Hera and this time let's play with the Wonder Pearl Liquid Lip in the shade 414. This is called Lady May and it's a rose gold kind of colour. It's beautiful. Oh, it smells like cupcakes and frosting. If, if you're old enough to have played with those cupcake you know, those invertible dolls when you were a kid. This smells like them. Oh my god, this is such a happy smell. So I'm going to be signing off right here, it's already started pouring so you're probably hearing a lot of the rain in the background, I'm sorry about that. I'll be seeing you guys quite soon in another lip swatch video. I have a whole bunch, a whole bunch of the Laura Mercier uh, Velour Extreme Matte Lipsticks to swatch for you, the whole series actually. So look out for that and uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week, I'll see you soon, bye!